Hey guys, welcome to King's RC. I'm absolutely loving the Armour Infraction. It's fast, it looks killer, and it's so much fun to drive. However, there is one thing that annoys me each time I take it out, and that's the whole chassis get filled up with rubber. When you go to change the batteries, the, the plugs get all covered in dusty rubber, and it just gets everywhere and it's annoying. So, I ordered some parts from Scorch RC all the way from the UK. So we've got the uh, fenders and also the chassis infills. Guys, this feels really thick. This is not the first Scorch RC product that I've bought. I've also got one for the Mojave, which you've probably seen in my previous videos. And absolutely loving it. Keeps most of the stuff out of the chassis and keeps it clean. So in the packet, we've got our screws. Here, we got some rubber, I don't know, some rubber rings here. And also fresh new scissors here, which is great. Every time you buy a set of fenders, you get, a, you get brand new scissors. It's good to have fresh scissors to cut thick plastic like this. We've also got some instructions, which is great. They're really easy to follow and it even shows you a photo of where you have to cut along. So yeah, let's get to work and start cutting these out. So guys, this is super thick. There's no way to actually cut all the way around in one hit. So if you can see there, I cut along here and then just cut across to get this piece off. Then you can fit the scissors back in there and continue that line. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm just using the light reflection just so I can see the line along here and just following that. Don't worry about having a bit of a rough cut because we can clean that up with the Dremel afterwards. So as you're cutting through, you just want to check out the actual drawing here and make sure you're cutting at the right spot. So guys, rather than trying to cut around as one piece all the way around here, it's best to just cut this in half so then you can, you can get your scissors right up around in there. So I've got these heavy duty scissors here to just chomp through it. So I'm not quite sure whether I follow this line here on the picture. It shows you cut it up the top, so that's what we're going to do. Cut on top of the corner, on the edge here. There it is guys, that's one cut up. Let's get the Dremel and clean it up. You're probably wondering what tool I'm using for the Dremel here. So this is just the right angle attachment. And this is another Dremel tool which I found. And what I did, I just put some Velcro on there and I stamped out some sandpaper into a little disc like this. And this sandpaper's got the little, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, this cotton sort of back on it. So it sticks to Velcro. Half my Velcro fell off, but that's been there for a while. And yeah, it's really great. And you got good control and um, holding it while you're kind of polishing something up. Sorry, I can't give you uh, part numbers or anything. If you look at this setup here, at least you know what to look for when you're at the hardware store. So, and you just want to get a bit of sandpaper just to clean up the rest of it by hand, all the little bits and pieces that's hanging off. There it is, guys. That's one cut up. Then you just got to repeat the steps for the other side. So let me get the rest of these cut out, guys. So guys, all four parts here are cut out. We just need to uh, cut out the sides here. And this one's going to be easy. It's just straight lines, not many curves. So this is probably the, the hardest one to do. So guys, with the side one, you want to cut on top of the curve. So if you look there, you want to cut 
right in the corner that way this will be all flat like the whole thing will be flat so probably best to cut it upside down and just cut from underneath also guys you want to cut off this tab so you don't want that to get caught in something So now we just got to clean this up with the Dremel and should be ready for the install. Alright guys, so the first thing we'll do is fit the uh, side infills here. So this side goes at the front and that goes at the back. You can't really mess it up because the holes will match up and obviously this goes on top. So we take this strip off. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> this one here. It then goes through there. Insert the holes. If you can't get it to fit, you just got to take it out again and Make the holes a little bit bigger on the end here or trim a little bit more so you can move it a little bit more to the front. That's the beauty of having a power tool. You can quickly just take screws in and out. So the front hole lines up perfectly. It's just the one in the back here. So we're just gonna get a body reamer and ream that hole a little bit bigger. A little bit more. Just gotta take your time and get the holes right. Perfect. So guys, that's one side fitted. We just gotta repeat the process on the other side. And then we'll get the uh, the wheel wells in. Alright guys, so that's the side infills installed. Now to install the wheel wells. So this one goes at the front here. So what we got to do first is take off the body post. And insert these little rubber washers here in between. And that should sit right underneath here. Like in between the posts. So we actually need two of these at the front. So the back only needs one rubber ring here. So now guys, we just got to put a nut and bolt onto the side here and we're almost done. Alright guys, so that's all done. Now to test out the body, see how well it fits. Pam. It's actually pretty good. Look at that. It's like it's not even there. Look at that guys, how much better does that look? <laughs> that's awesome. It's like got full wheel, wheel, wheel wheels in there now. So the back here is fully covered, but the front still got a bit of a gap there. So the front area here still got a lot of open space. And now we're going to install these chassis infills here. I saw them, they were small, and I was hoping we won't have to cut them out, but <laughs> looks like we're going to have to do some cutting. So we'll cut these out and screw these straight in here. Alright guys, this one's easy. You just pretty much place it in there, line up the screws. And with the included screws here, you just simply screw it in. Alright 
Alright guys, so that's all installed. So I don't know if I've cut a little bit too much on this side. This side seems a little bit more flush there. But I just hope that doesn't come down and catch onto something and just rip off. I'm not quite sure how long these will last. It is at the bottom of the car. So um, yeah, it kind of also depends where you're running it. But if, I'm, if I was to run this on like say a rough terrain, yeah, I can't see this lasting at all. I can just see this getting ripped up. Anyways, that's um, all installed. It looks all right. I'm pretty happy with it. It looks like it's it's going to keep a lot of things out from the chassis. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, I've I've never been disappointed with Scorch RC stuff. Defenders in the Mojave's done me well. So, yeah, this looks this looks pretty good. And the fact that unlike the Mojave, the actual pin here uh, you had to drill the hole a little bit bigger because the actual fenders sit on top. Well, this one, the fenders sit underneath the pin. So putting the body on is literally like it's not even there. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. If you decide to get these uh, Scorch RC fenders, um, I'll probably say, yeah, they're, they're good quality. I'd recommend them. It, it, it is a lot of work to get them on. I mean, you got to cut them all out. I, I wish it was all cut out, but, you know, you do get a pair of scissors with them. So I guess that's not too bad either. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned on the running video and updates on this bad boy and see how much it's kept everything out of it and see how clean it is after a run. Thanks for watching, guys. Click like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.